Hello, my name's Craig Barton, and welcome to a series of videos designed to help you make the most out of my website, diagnosticquestions.com. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can analyze the results from your students' attempts at a quiz that you've assigned to them. So to do this, first we've gotta find the quiz. So if we click on assignments, you'll get a list of all the quizzes that you've assigned to your classes, um, filtered by the newest. And the one I'm particularly interested in is a lovely little quiz I assigned to my lovely year 11 class, uh, Mr. Barton's year 11 quiz five. And if I just click on action, I'm gonna click on the data for that quiz. Now, just to give you a bit of background, each week um, I create a mixed bag of questions, um, 10 questions, which I give to my year 11s, just to keep their revision ticking over. And here I can see a summary of their results. First off, headline figure, 61% is the uh, average score. There are 18 attempts, and there's, there's just to show you that they are year 11s, average age 15.8. And there's a graph that summarizes the performance on each question. And as a teacher, my eyes immediately are drawn to questions three, four, and eight, and possibly 10 as well. Something's going on there. Um, now, as I scroll down, I can see the questions, and you'll also notice lots of little dots appearing. Each of these dots represents one of my students. And crucially, as I hover over each of these dots, I get the explanation that my student actually gave. And this is my favorite part of the website, although of course I'm incredibly biased seeing it as soon as it is my website. Because this doesn't just tell me which students got it right and wrong. It tells me exactly why they got it right and why they got it wrong. So as I ho hover over here, Beth, um, I can immediately spot what Beth's misconception is. She is straight away adding two more whole thirds to the fraction and arriving at the incorrect answer of minus four over three. So I'm, I'm thinking there Beth has got a misconception when it comes to actually dealing with the negative numbers themselves. And I can do that throughout, the, uh, throughout each of the questions. But I'm just going to show you what I actually do myself because I ask my students to complete these by Thursday evening. I set them every Monday. And Thursday evening, I sit down and I just pick out questions where I think we've got whole class issues here. Because, for example, with question one, as I'll show you in a later video, uh, although Beth's got that wrong, as soon as she's finished her quiz, she will be told she's got that wrong. And then she'll be able to view correct answers, not just from her uh, classmates but from students all around the world and those explanations will hopefully help Beth resolve that misconception herself but let's just have a look here uh, question eight is causing big big problems for my students and it's a nasty little question about uh, rationalizing the denominator so if I just hover over I can see Kelsey uh, she thinks that u times by one plus oh, sorry if I actually if I just show you the question itself there you'll get you'll be able to see it a little bit bigger uh, with a b c and d so i can see here that kelsey she thinks that u times by one plus root two in, instead of one minus root two but she's telling me exactly why she's doing that so at least i know the other by far the most popular answer to get rid of that one plus root two on the bottom is to times by uh, root two over root two and as chloe right uh, chloe says you need to remove the third from the denominator so straight away I'm, I'm getting a major insight into exactly how my students think about this particular question and what I then do is on Friday is I think, right, I'm probably going to need to teach uh, rationalizing the denominator again. But instead of doing it from scratch, I'm going to use some of the explanations from students who've got it right. Maybe get them up to the front to do it. Maybe project their explanations on the board or so on. Um, if I just scroll down to the bottom, I also get a nice little summary of how my students have got on. Um, uh, oh, and I should have said as well, by the way, that I can filter these questions by uh, the most incorrect ones so I can straight away highlight where my big problem areas are. And as I mentioned before, questions three, eight, and four are causing big issues for my particular class. Four is a particularly interesting one there. Look at the even spread of the wrong answers there. That seems to have really caught my students out. Um, so if I hover over any of these, I can see all the different explanations that my uh, students have given. And in fact, if I go back to the dots and I say, for example, I'd love to see all Chloe's answers. If I click on that, that'll just highlight all Chloe's answers for each question for me there. Uh, what I can also do if we uh, we're focus on Chloe, uh, if I click that download as PDF, this is a nice little feature. And <laughs> again, I'm saying it's nice, but then again, I am very biased. This creates a little PDF. Um, personalized to Chloe so it shows her answer to the question it shows her reason she's given and it also shows either a reason that she's liked herself or if not the most popular correct uh, reason given by students from all around the world and what I like to do for my students is print those out and they get those stuck in their books and it's a nice little bit of evidence that they've done the quiz and a nice little bit of a summary as well 
Um, I'll just show you one other thing that you can do uh, with uh, just individual class results before we look at kind of comparing results um, in another video. Say I take this particular question here, £200 is invested at compound interest, and I want to just uh, hone in exactly on the uh, reasons myself. Uh, if I click on that, by default, I get to see um, uh, students who've got the answer correct and read their explanations. But if I want to just go um, advanced, and I just want to go for all students in class, and I want to find my class, and there it is there, uh, my year 11s, apply filter. Um, then that's just going to filter out all my students and I can see their answers. So they're all the ones who got it right and I get their answers nicely summarized there. What about students who got B? I'm interested in that. I can see the names of them and I can just read nicely summarized um, how they all got that there. So there's a way that I analyze my students' results each week and then I act upon that in the classroom on the Friday. If you want to see further about how we can make um, meaningful comparisons and so on or anything else on the website, if you click on excuse me, if you click on about and then you go to the how-to videos, you'll find loads of them there. Take care and bye for now.